If you want to level up your server with a custom Discord bot, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to add new features and automate tasks with the help of Discord bots. And it's way easier than you might think. Let's get started. For the uninitiated, Discord bots can automatically run tasks like scheduling or moderation, so you don't have to. You've got a whole bunch of ready-to-use Discord bots at your fingertips, or you can create one of your own. Bots work silently in the background, freeing you up to focus on your own business. But you can create and host a Discord bot on your own computer, but since they will be operating 24-7, you'll want to have a stable hosting environment for them to reach maximum performance for you to truly rely on them. For that, I recommend choosing Hostinger's virtual private servers, which are ideal for hosting your Discord bots. I'll show you how to upload it to your private server, but the first thing we have to do is set up a Discord bot account. Let me show you how you can do that. First things first, if you don't have it already, make sure you have your Discord account set up and ready. However, we'll be logging into Discord's developer portal instead. There, we can create bots, manage their settings, and generate the authentication links to invite them to your Discord server. Once you're in Discord's developer portal, select Applications from the sidebar and choose New Application. Give your new bot a name and make sure you tick the Developer Terms of Service and Developer Policy box. You can add a short description of what your bot will do, change the icon, and add a tag or two before pressing that Save button. Then, copy the application ID and write it down somewhere safe. You'll need it again in a minute. With that out of the way, it's time to configure your bot token. Something that acts as an authentication key that allows your bot to communicate with the Discord bot API. Select bot from the sidebar and change its username. Then, select reset bot token, confirm, and copy the bot token, which is something you'll need a bit later as well. It's important to keep your credentials secure because leaking them could expose your bot and server to security risks, and we really don't want that to happen. Next, we need to enable developer mode to bypass your Discord bot's SKU's related payment. You can toggle developer mode to on by going to advanced and then user settings. Then, enable the application test mode switch and enter your application ID. Set the URL origin type to localhost and the port number as 8080 before hitting activate. Now we're ready to configure your bot's account permissions and authentication method. Go to applications, select OAuth2 and click URL generator, checking bot as your application scope and checking the same boxes for the bot permissions. This will generate a URL. Make sure that it contains your bot's client ID, and if it does, copy and save it to your machine. With this done, head to the bot section and grant your bot privileged gateway intents. If you aren't sure which ones your bot will use, you can simply select enable all. However, bear in mind that this will grant the bot access to various bits of your Discord data. Finally, open the authentication link using your favorite web browser and invite your new bot to your Discord server, granting all the necessary permissions. From the drop-down menu, select the server to which you want to add the bot and click continue. Take a moment to review the permissions you will grant to the bot, and if you wish to revoke any of them, simply uncheck the boxes. Finally, click authorize to confirm. Python and JavaScript are the leading choices for developing a Discord bot, though C++ is a viable alternative as well. No other programming languages are supported by the Discord API wrappers, which is actually rather neat because they simplify development and make it easier for your code to chat with the software. The choice comes down entirely to what you prefer. Just know that the functionality of your bot isn't impacted by the language or wrapper that you choose, so go ahead and pick what you want. For this tutorial, I'll use Python and work in Visual Studio Code. So let's go ahead and start coding our bot. All right, first things first, you'll need to create a new folder for your Discord bot files. Then open the code editor, access the folder, and create your working files. Create a main.py file to house all of your bot's code. And for a more complex bot, you might require several files that are all connected to the main one. Okay, next create a .nv file, which will make an ideal home in which to store your bot token. It's this file that your Python code will call to authenticate the connection to the Discord API. So it's important that you leave the .nv file name blank, otherwise the bot code won't ever find it. 
Unsurprisingly, the code you will need for your bot will differ depending on what you want it to do. For this tutorial, I'll create a bot that responds to a simple command. All right, here's a big old snippet of code that you can use as an example. Nobody wants to listen to me reading out lines of code, so feel free to pause the video here to take a better look. You can also find the snippet for you to copy in our tutorial article, which I've linked in the description below. And here's the snippet in action. First, the import keywords retrieve code from a module and add it to your bot's file, meaning you can use a function without having to type it all out manually. Here, I'll import the discord.py library to enable the bot.command decorator. Next, I'll define the variables. In this case, they're discord bot intents, client, and bot. The addbot.event decorator defines what events trigger the coroutine function. In this case, the instructions are to print a confirmation message when it runs successfully. Meanwhile, the addbot.command decorator sets the command that triggers the bot. Oh, and I've also determined how and when the bot responds. The load underscore dot nv function reads the environment variable from the dot nv file. In this case, it retrieves the token. Then, using the os.getNV method, the code extracts the token value and uses that to run the bot with the bot.run decorator. So far, so good, right? If you're interested in diving deep into tech savviness, you can enhance the system with features like voice control or input fields, in addition to its ability to respond to commands. You can find a wealth of further details on how to implement those features, such as the discord.py documentation page. Moving on, open your .nv file and add a line of code that says token equals sign, followed by your authentication key. To check whether your code runs properly, click run Python file. Oh, and here's a sneaky little tip. If you work in a team that continuously updates Discord bots, create a Git repository to simplify the development process. I'll leave a link in the description below to a few articles regarding this topic. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful and you're interested in diving into more content like this, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We post new videos every week, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on some great new content. Okay, now that we've finally set up that Discord bot of yours, it's time to talk about how to host it on your virtual private server. As I mentioned before, you can create a Discord bot hosting service on your local computer, but it requires a big old heap of effort to manage it. Not to mention that the system must run 24 seven, potentially causing hardware damage in the long run. Doesn't sound all that great, I know but a Discord bot hosting service like VPS is more convenient, time efficient, and not to mention safer. All of that VPS power lets your bot handle complex tasks without a sweat. Essentially, your VPS provider will take care of all the heavy lifting, allowing you to focus on developing and optimizing your bot. At Hostinger, we have a wide range of VPS plans for you to choose from. Simply head to hostinger.com slash VPS dash hosting and choose one that suits you best. For the best price, pick the 24 month plan and if you enter the discount code VPS10 at the checkout, we'll even give you an additional 10% off your purchase. Don't mention it. Okay, with your plan secured, it's time to configure your VPS environment. For this tutorial, I'll be using Hostinger's VPS hosting plan running Ubuntu 22.04. The environment you'll need depends on your bot's programming language and functionality. For Python, you'll need something called a Python interpreter, which will convert your code into a machine-readable format. You will also require a pip package manager in order to install any modules and dependencies. Finally, virtual NV will also be needed to create an isolated virtual private environment. This will also prevent you from installing Python packages globally, something that can potentially break other projects you're working on, which can be an incredibly annoying misstep. For JavaScript, install node.js and node package manager. To install the components, connect to your server using an SSH application such as PuTTY or Terminal, which is included in the Mac OS. If you're using Hostinger's VPS hosting services, you can find your login credentials in SSH access under the VPS overview. Once connected, run the following commands to update your package manager and install the required software for hosting your Discord bot. Now, follow the steps to create a virtual environment for your Python project. Firstly, run this command to create a new directory to store those files. Change the current directory to that folder using the cd discard by command. Moving on, set the new virtual environment with the venv argument. 
If you're done with that, activate the virtual environment using the following source command. Your command line should now start with the venv argument. If the source command isn't found, navigate to the discord bot slash venv slash bin directory path using the cd command and then type source activate. Now that your virtual environment is all set up, you can move both token and bot files into the new directory using either an SFTP client, rsync command, or SCP protocol. However, I recommend using SFTP as it's more secure than standard FTP. Not to mention that the visual interface makes the whole process way more straightforward. So for this tutorial, I'll use FileZilla to transfer the files via SFTP. First, download, install, and open FileZilla. Then, enter your server IP address, username, password, and port number. This will be set to 22 by default, but don't ask me why. Click Quick Connect and locate the new dot slash venv directory in remote. Then, you can drag and drop your bot files from your local computer into the remote directory. Once the transfer is complete, return to your SSH client or terminal and install all the dependencies in your bot's directory. Here, I'll install the Discord bot pi wrapper and .nv using this command. Now, in order to run the bot, you'll need to set the current directory to the main pi file location and run the following command, also changing the file name to your own. If it's working correctly, the terminal should return a confirmation message, something similar to this. Good, we're almost there. Finally, if you open your Discord server where your bot is located, it should appear online. To check if your bot is running correctly, you can enter any command and see if it replies as you'd expect. At this point, your bot will only be active during your current session. In other words, if you were to close your SSH client or terminal to end the session, your bot would stop working as well. If you want to keep your bot running even when your session isn't active, there are a variety of tools available. One is called Linux Screen, which lets you create multiple virtual terminals inside a session that will run in the background once a session is terminated. Another solution is known as Tmux, which works similarly to Linux Screen, but while it can be easier to use, it's sometimes less stable and contains fewer features. PM2 is a Node.js application process manager that keeps applications running constantly. It's native to JavaScript, but works well with Python and other programming languages. Finally, we have Docker, which is a containerization tool that turns your Discord bot into a daemon, allowing it to run in the background and reboot automatically after any system failures. These are the commands that you would need to run your Discord bot on Ubuntu VPS with the Linux screen. Let me quickly walk you through it all. Okay, first things first, run this command to install screen. Now, type screen and hit enter to create a new session. To change the working directory, use the cd slash discord bot slash venv command in your virtual terminal. Now, you'll need to start your discord bot using the following line. Once the bot is running, hit the control ad shortcut to detach the screen session. Just a quick note, if you're using RHEL derivatives like Alma Linux and CentOS, use the yum package management system instead of apt to install screen. Now, your session will remain running in the background after being disconnected from the server. To reconnect the screen, open your SSH application and enter screen-r. Screen will also allow you to create multiple sessions to run other than Discord bots using this command. Simply replace session with your session name. A quick pro tip here, don't get too lazy and use a descriptive name to help you quickly identify your sessions and their process. Finally, to list all the current user sessions, use the screen-ls command. Once you've set up your Discord bot, it's a good idea to keep an eye on it to make sure it's running smoothly and spot any problems before they start. The first thing to do is enable the logging Python module to track your Discord bot's events and errors. You can make this happen by using this bit of code in your bot's file. It will mark down any command hiccups in the bot.log file and on your Discord server, giving you a heads up on how your bot's doing and making it easier to fix and figure things out along the way. I'll leave the code snippet in the description below. It's also worth adding this piece of code to your bot.event decorator to print the error message on your Discord server. If you're really keen, you can use tools like Uptime Robot to monitor, you guessed it, Uptime. If you want to track usage and activity, an application performance monitoring tool like Grafana will prove to be invaluable. 
With Hostinger, you can also monitor your VPS hardware usage, including CPU, RAM, storage load, and network condition on your dedicated H-Panel dashboard. If you're not using Hostinger and your server doesn't come with a control panel, you can use Python's PSUtil or Linux-based commands such as vmstat. Finally, having done all of that, I also recommend submitting your application to a bot list website like top.gg to share the wealth and make it accessible to other Discord users. I'm sure everyone will appreciate your contribution. And that pretty much sums it up. I hope that this video has made it easier for you to create and host that Discord bot that you always wanted. If it really did, give us a thumbs up and share this video with anyone that you think would need it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss new videos that we post every single week. Thank you for watching and good luck on your online journey.